Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Joan Barata. Dr. Barata is a fellow at the Cyber Policy Center of Stanford University and teaches at various universities in different parts of the world. His work focuses on freedom of expression, media and communications regulation, and intermediary liability issues. He's the author of several books and has published many articles on these topics, both in academic and popular press. Dr. Barata is regularly involved in projects with international organizations such as UNESCO, the Council of Europe, the Organization of American States and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, where he was the principal advisor to the representative on media freedom. Dr. Barata also has experience as a regulator as he held the position of Secretary General of the Audiovisual Council of Catalonia in Spain and was member of the Permanent Secretariat of the Mediterranean Network of Regulatory Authorities. Okay, Joan, you know about your challenge telling us how to fix an element included or omitted in the Media Freedom Act. Yeah, what I've chosen, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be in the podcast as usual. So, no, uh, what I chose is um, Article 17 of the mm -hmm. Media Freedom Act. Uh, it is an article that, uh, in a way, tries to provide some sort of privileged treatment uh, to media content based on a series of uh, criteria that uh, platforms are supposed to ac assess and acknowledge. And uh, so, I mean, what the article does is to establish a series of criteria uh, to define who will have access to this or who will deserve this privileged treatment by platforms and what kind of privilege treatment precisely will, will these um, specific media actors get from, from platforms. And I think that uh, this article, although uh, I see the, the intentions or the good intentions that are behind it, uh, um, has uh, particular problems, uh, particularly when it comes to the definition uh, of uh, what is media, uh, the, the requisites that uh, media need to meet in order to enjoy this treatment, um, the fact that this is something that will have to be assessed basically by online platforms uh, based on very, very open uh, criteria. And even the kind of treatment that is I mean, included, defined in the, in the Media Freedom Act um, uh, is, has some, let's say, uh, is not precise enough in terms of what it consists and may trigger um, cases of clear discriminatory, unjustified uh, treatment of speak a certain type of speakers vis-a-vis -vis other types of speakers uh, or that use online platforms. In a nutshell, that would be my, my the concern that I would like to express today with you. Uh, thank you, Joan. I think um, to come back to your key points and, and maybe just to see if I understood you correctly, on the one hand, obviously, if you grant a privilege, there is a chance that some speech is then um, less privileged, let's say, compared to yours. You're basically doing a gradation of which speech deserves more protection than others. And even though I think everyone agrees that journalism is extremely important for democracy and, and you know, freedom of the press and, and their speech is, is important, um, it is not clear that if you do that gradation, you are not uh, pushing back speech of, I think you mentioned in some of your blog posts, NGOs, you know, other civil society actors that also play an important role as watchdogs uh, of democracy, that you push their speech maybe back. Because obviously, platforms, when they moderate, have to decide who they moderate first, I guess, or who they give a special treatment to. Is that is that a correct understanding of, of, of your concern? Indeed, indeed. This is what I, I meant to say. Uh, I think it is important to, to take into account here uh, uh, international standards on, on freedom of expression and also, and more in particular, the way freedom of expression, the right to freedom of expression has been defined by uh, the European Court of Human Rights and the documents of the, of the Council of Europe. And what we can say here is basically, I mean, that, that, that the European Court of Human Rights, international standards 
do not necessarily protect specific categories of speakers, but they instead, instead tend to protect specific categories of speech, no matter who the speaker is. No? Uh, and for example, political speech is particularly protected. No? Uh, and this includes speech from journalists, but also speech from other actors, including, as you said, for example, NGOs, activists, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, speech on matters of public interest is particularly protected, but this doesn't mean that journalists have the, or professional journalists have the monopoly, or let's say traditional media have the monopoly when it comes to reporting on, on matters of, of public interest. So making this separation would exclude, um, let's say, identical types of speech that are being disseminated by actors that are not media, at least according to the limited definition of media that, the, can, that can be found in the current version of the Media Freedom Act. Thank you so much, Joan. I think that, that really clarified the issue to me, which is at the end of the day, if, you, if it's speech that's protected and not the originator of the speech as such, that is a very difficult thing to define, I think in an act, uh, and one would hope that maybe the practice of rolling out the DSA, the Digital Services Act, you know, and working with digital service coordinators would be a better de facto approach, case by case approach, than maybe a bland media privilege that, that is there and applies to certain organizations and not others. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so I guess how to fix Article 17 is not an easy one, and maybe it's not fixable <laughs> at this stage <laughs> yeah i think i think that i mean first thing is that we we shouldn't make it worse uh first thing <laughs> is that, which is something that sometimes happens uh, uh when when it comes to amendments etc and the other thing is that um uh, i believe that uh, in some cases we can we can acknowledge that the fact that platforms must be particularly careful when it comes to certain types of speech. And now if we think, for example, of the conflict in Ukraine, uh, people reporting from Ukraine, but not, not only journalists, but perhaps individual citizens who are, let's say, reporting on what is going on. I mean, this is something that platforms need to be very careful about and not to immediately label it as violent or extremist content just because I mean, some, uh, let's say, violent images are being shown. So, I mean, I think that platforms need to adapt and protect, for example, in crisis situations or uh, moments where, I mean, it is very important to, to receive direct reporting, direct information from the ground, not to, not to limit speech huh, in very important circumstances. But again, this is not about a certain type of speaker. This is about protecting speech certain types of speech in specific circumstances. So I think that the way to fix this article would be to take this direction, uh, to, to, to kind of, uh, let's say, provide clear indications to platforms to avoid, uh, let's say, that in certain cases, for example, in election processes, uh, speech is not excessively affected and everyone has the chance to, to disseminate information of particular public uh, interest. And probably this is something in terms of assessment of the circumstances that would justify special protection is something that platforms cannot do on their own. So also, let's say, a possible assessment of this nature or determining who can or who cannot uh, receive a certain special tra treatment must also include, I mean, all the stakeholders, perhaps independent public authorities, like election commissions, so on, so on and so forth. But I acknowledge that, I mean, to, to, it's very easy to formulate this uh, this desideratum in, in, in abstract, but then putting them in writing in a, in a legal norm is not, is, is not that easy. So I, I, I acknowledge that. But I think that the, the, now the main risk is that this, this Article 17 becomes a true media uh, exemption, uh, which would basically consolidate certain old media, traditional media monopolies, in, particularly in areas like TV, television, and, and which is something that I mean, 
on the contrary, uh, in principle, the, the Media Freedom Act proclaims to try to avoid. Huh? So um, this, this would be uh, some sort of an internal contradiction if it, uh, if it finally happens in, in such a way. So to conclude, Joanne, um, speech is what is protected by the principles of freedom of speech, not the speaker. <laughs> Let's put it that, that way. We need to avoid in the European Media Freedom Act to create a media exemption uh, as such that consolidates or puts forward certain traditional media over other alternatives. I mean, we know about citizen journalism. We know about as you said, during the Ukraine war, nearly every citizen is a journalist at the moment reporting on what's happening in their town, in their village. Mm -hmm. um, and also we need to acknowledge that giving uh, those type of judgments to platforms on their own uh, carries risk. So they need to be helped. They need to be, you know, that there needs to be a framework in which this occurs to make sure that it's done well. And I, and I think platforms themselves will recognize that that, that is not their expertise. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, so basically a very complex issue and Article 17 gives a solution that is maybe not the right one and that also doesn't acknowledge the complexity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I would also add, let me just add to one yeah, sure. minute or 30 seconds only that even the, the, the definition of media included in the Media Freedom Act is very limited for any purpose. Huh? Because basically it basically refers to audiovisual media, the way, I mean, it is already defined by EU law and press publications. Huh? It doesn't acknowledge other forms of reporting or journalism, if you want to call it this way, as, as media. And this is already a problem uh, that we can find, I mean, in the main definitions of the act. I mean, and something that also deserves to be noted here. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Joanne. Have a great day. <laughs>